The 2020 NHL Draft has had a lot of prospects breaking out in the NHL this year. Alexi Lafreniere is finally starting to look like the player that was drafted first overall. Lucas Raymond is really starting to get going with the Detroit Red Wings. You even got players like Connor Zary, Cole Perfetti, and Marco Rossi looking fantastic. But a player that has been called a bust a lot over these last couple years for being drafted so high has finally broken out in a big way this year, and that is Quinton Byfield of the LA Kings who was drafted second overall by LA back in 2020. And even though there was some slow development, he's starting to look elite for this Kings team. But just how good has he been? Where would he go in a redraft right now? And how good can he be for LA? We'll watch till the end as we dissect everything with Quinton Byfield's game to see what's next. And of course, make sure you hit that subscribe button for more hockey and prospect content just like this all throughout the year. And when we look at Quinton Byfield, there has been a lot of flack over him for the past couple of years, being a second overall draft pick and being as slowly developing as he has. But when we look back on his draft year, it's not really the most surprising thing. In 45 games, 32 goals, 50 assists for 82 points, point-wise in the OHL, was absolutely dominant. But even though that production was insane, there was still a lot of rawness with Quinton Byfield. Even though there was some obvious upside and some insane potential, which is why I still had him ranked second overall, and is why he ended up going second overall, there was a reason why that development was slow. But considering the profile, I think the Kings have given him a pretty smart development plan. Thankfully, after he was drafted, there were some weird pandemic things, and he was able to go to the AHL, and in 32 games, he got 8 goals, 12 assists for 20 points. For a player as young as him, that's pretty solid. You gotta remember that he is an August birth date, so he's one of the youngest players in his draft year, and the fact that he was already in the AHL just after turning 18 was pretty impressive and doing as well as he was. But there were some concerns that that processing speed might be a little bit of a difficulty for Byfield, that eventually that pace and that speed at the NHL level, at least in terms of decision making, might hold him back. But I think starting in the AHL from almost day one really helped him adjust to that pro game immediately and get a lot more prepared for the NHL in the future. But of course, you can see in the U20 World Juniors, he got seven points in seven games. And besides that insane one game where he got a bunch of points, there were some disappointments throughout that tourney for him, not looking maybe as dominant as people expected. And I think that's where a lot of people really started to say that Byfield might not be the player that he was drafted to be at second overall. But here's the thing, he would continue to kind of slowly develop. You would see in 2022, he'd play his first full chunk in the NHL, getting 40 games, 5 goals, 5 assists for 10 points, and playing 11 AHL games, getting 6 points there too. And in those 40 games, he was fine, he was okay, didn't really get a lot of ice time, but didn't really necessarily earn more ice time either. It was a first year in the NHL. He was okay, but wasn't blowing anybody away. Which for some people, especially for people that only watched the World Juniors last year and him not really having the greatest all-around tournament, really concerned a lot of folks. But you also have to consider this is a player that is a ginormous size and was just turning 19 heading into the year. So him kind of struggling, trying to get his feet wet in the NHL, isn't surprising for how young he was and the frame that he had too, to even be in the NHL and get a few points here and there is a good thing. But then the next season would come in 2022-23 and he would get 22 points in 53 games, three goals in 53 games, and this was a really interesting year for him. Because you can see in his first 32 games, there was definitely an uptick in scoring, but it wasn't all too substantial. He went from four, uh, 10 points in 40 games to 12 points in 32 games. Definitely an improvement, but you can see two goals in 32 games and just a lack of incredible point production. With Byfield, this start was definitely kind of more of the same for but Byfield would continue to chip away at things and eventually would get a first line spot with Anze Kobitar and Adrian Kempe. And obviously the points are likely to come from it, but he was playing well too. In his final 21 games of the regular season, he got one goal, nine assists for 10 points. But that playmaking was starting to really shine through for LA and he started to become a valuable asset on this forward group which was great to finally see turn the page. He wasn't just a prospect anymore getting his feet wet. He was finally starting to get the hang of things. And you can see in the playoffs versus Edmonton in that first round, he got four points in six games played, had a couple of rough moments defensively for sure, but offensively was really starting to show through, had some clutch moments here and there. And for Byfield, it was good improvement. And so far in this 2024 season, it seems like Quinton Byfield is finally flourishing into the player that I thought he could be. You can see in 2024, in his third full NHL season, in 14 games, he has two goals, 11 assists for 13 points. Now, even though you still want to see more of that goal scoring and see that shot be a little bit better, that playmaking, that overall game has been so much better. It has taken leaps and bounds. 
And you can really start to see the chemistry of both Kobitar and Kempe and how well Byfield has been able to solidify himself on that line, using his physicality more, inserting himself in the play more and more, and just getting more confident as well. These things have led his natural skill to really shine through. And you can see on this play in the Philadelphia game, Gavrikov is going to shoot it in front of the net, but Byfield, a perfect tip to Kempe, and that's just perfection. It can't get much better than that. He hasn't quite had the confidence to be able to pull this move off in the past in the NHL, as well as just the chemistry again with Kempe and Kopitar. You can see that chemistry with Kempe, knowing exactly where he is and where he needs to put the pass, just a perfect little tip, and that's all that matters. But again, it comes back to that engagement and being more involved in the play here in the power play for LA he's been incredible in the power play even though he's not been given the best minutes in the world you can see as the LA Kings rush up here Byfield comes along the wall great little move there to set up to know even though he's not able to score look at Byfield not giving up on this play it's a loose puck he puts it through is able to somehow find his teammate and Kaliab just perfect and it's 3-0 at multiple points byfield needed to bring some physicality needed to bring some flash he brought some flash earlier in the play bringing physicality when he needed it to later and that creates the goal in the end here byfield the most active player on the ice and that pace getting that quickness was a concern well now he's looking perfect in that category and then you have one of my favorite shifts from him in this entire season so far. 2-0 LA. This was a dominant game by both the Kings and Byfield. But this goal does not happen with him. You can see the puck is kind of shot into the leaf zone. Byfield, though, some incredible quickness. And Lilligren just has no chance. Byfield easily coming in and stealing that puck. And you can see he's still able to keep possession. It kind of flips back along. And right there, Kaliev, perfect shot. And it's 3-0 LA. But that relentlessness on the puck, that huge physical size that he's finally starting to utilize, Byfield is doing everything right, right now. Really, the last big major block that's really keeping Byfield from that star potential is that shot and, of course, the goals that he scored in the NHL this year, which have been rather low for a player of his stature. There's a lot less confidence in his shot right now, and you can kind of see that he's defaulting a lot more to the playmaking, which he is incredible at doing, but that shot getting to another level could put him up to a 90-point guy. Seriously. You can see his goal scoring totals over the past few seasons, four, five goals in 40 games in his rookie season, three goals in 53 games in 2023, and two goals in 14 games this year. To me, having that extra edge in his game and that confidence in his shot is going to go a long way. Sure, that playmaking has been phenomenal, but if you can make the players guess, if you can make teams guess that you could actually shoot the puck, then that'll be an extra element in Byfield's game that he could use right now. This isn't a player that is perfect at 21 years old, still has a lot of time and growth to go, but that's why the Kings drafted him. Even at 21, he's still learning, still getting better, but has 13 points in 14 games. That's the magic with Quinton Byfield. But to me, the biggest difference is not just playing on that first line and looking good with Kopitar and Kempe, because a lot of players could do that. Kopitar and Kempe are unreal players at this stage, especially Kempe, who has taken his game to an other elite level. But with Quinton Byfield, he doesn't just look at home and in riding on the coattails of those two guys. He is looking like his own player and his own dominant player too. And using that physicality, using that edge that he has to his advantage. And that is really the biggest difference already how much improvement we've seen in his physical game has gone so far and i think that's one of the biggest things that's come from him starting the ahl so early and finding success there was using his physicality more and more and having to learn to use his physicality more and more and that we've seen that become one of maybe the more weaknesses in his game to one of the strengths for him. and the fact that again he doesn't turn 22 until next august this is still a center and a big center that is so young and so good already we already know that bigger players take more time to adjust to the NHL level, but with Quinton Byfield, it is so good to see that success naturally come with him. And again, that youth is still so prevalent. He has not even reached close to the potential that he can have in the NHL. Right now, with the way he's playing, I mean, this is a guy that could be a 90-point center for this LA Kings team. He is already looking so good in the production. If he gets that goal scoring going, man, he could be a point per game player right now on this LA Kings team. He has been so good, so consistent throughout this entire year. And that's really the big thing. Some of these 20 to 20 draftees have had some good stretches throughout this season, some good moments. With Byfield, he has been a complete player through and through. And those advanced stats are also showing the same thing with Byfield. This is five on five expected goals for per 60. So how many goals on the ice you're expected to be with 
it per 60 minutes and you can see Quinton Byfield is third on the team in five on five expected goals for per 60 but 3.58 only Adrian Kempe and Jordan Spence are above him and in terms of expected goals against as well he's one of the better players on the team with a 2.34 which for a 21 year old player is pretty rare a lot of younger players are typically a lot more high event high offense high, uh, rough defense but with Byfield you're seeing an adjustment already in the defensive play and the results have been fantastic and in terms of forwards, you got a few players above him, but I mean, he's ahead of players like Anze Kopitar, Philip Deneau at this stage. All of LA has been pretty good in terms of defensive analytics, but Quinton Byfield is among the best already. And you just look towards that 2020 draft, and now with players like Lafreniere, Byfield, Marco Rossi really showing them uh, themselves, I mean, you can see just how solid this draft class has been. I mean, you have players like Alexander Holtz who haven't really been able to totally adjust the NHL level yet. You've had, of course, uh, players like uh, Dylan Holloway who have been in the NHL but not really putting up much production. But for the most part, a lot of these players are playing up to their potential, playing up to their draft position, and it's just great to see that actually happening. The top 15, though, just looking very solid, and it's great to see so many guys come out of it with so much success. And of course, rest in peace, Rodan Amirov. You will never, ever be forgotten. Moving on to Byfield's potential and what we can see out of him. It's kind of hard to say because Byfield's potential has grown up and down and up for, for so many different people. But to me with Byfield, I think the biggest question is how much will he be able to turn into a center long term? Of course, he's found the most success, especially this year, being on that left wing with Kempe and Kopitar. But that's really, I guess, the biggest hurdle holding him back along with that lack of shot potential right now from really getting those amazing, insane numbers. But he is an incredible playmaker, and I think that will last at least. And that physical presence that we have seen has gone so, has had so much improvement that it's hard not to see him continually progressing. Once he works in that shot a little bit more, and maybe in the face soft dot as well, I think we could see him as a pretty natural center, but he's working well as a four checker, so that might be something that he just turns into. Maybe he is and just this exceptional power forward winger in the future, a la Miko Rantanen or something. But Byfield has just shown so many signs that, yeah, hey, he might be a center, he might not be, but no matter what ends up happening, he is going to be a valuable piece, an incredibly valuable piece for this LA Kings team. So I would say around a point per game is, I guess, realistic for Byfield. I mean, he's already around that point right now at 21 years old, but a player that gets around 70, 85 points continually throughout his career, I could absolutely see that with some good physical size and, of course, defensive play that hopefully gets uh, keeps getting better and better. And if you can show that on the wing, if you can show that at center, that'd be nice. But for LA, of course, with what we see with their center plan and bringing in, of course, Pierre-Luc Dubois, it doesn't seem like there's any total pressure for Byfield to be that complete centerman more so be the complete player he needs to be whether that's on winger or at sea i want to know from you guys though what do you guys see out of quinton byfield is this a player that will regress do you see byfield continuing to get better and better how do you see him continuing to improve on this la kings team do you see him being a first line center in the future do you see him being a winger do you see him as center how many points does he get as the height of his nhl career let us know all your thoughts down below and let me know let me know how you guys think of the 2020 class so far and how a lot of these different guys have been progressing i would love to know your thoughts down below of course we shoot that like button hit that subscribe button and hit that notification bell if you haven't for more prospect videos and breakdowns just like this all throughout the year because y'all won't want to miss a thing and of course make sure you share a video with all the hockey fans all the kings fans you guys know online and click on this card for all my hockey prospect talk right in one playlist it's been a blessing spending this time with you guys. Thank you so much for choosing the channel to spend your time with today. I appreciate it so, so much. It's a, it's a dream to be able to do this full time and you guys make that a reality. Thank you so much for watching. QB lovers unite and we will see you in the next one. Goodbye.